Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. You saying hello or not? Hello. Uh, it is a snowy Sunday today and I've got to get some of the cars off the forecourt. We've got a couple of test drives booked. I've got loads to do today. I've got to go and take Amy Winehouse here back for his car that he left in Manchester last night. I've got a football game to go to this afternoon, but this this has got to come first. So I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone and do a quick garage tour. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Sadly, there are one or two cars still there that you'll recognise from last time. Yeah, anyway, such is life. I was expecting to have to defrost all the cars this morning because, well, when we left home, they were covered in snow. But it doesn't seem to be too bad here, does it? No. I think before we get there, I'm just going to go and get a quick coffee. Well, Fancy a coffee? Well needed. Yeah. Right, I'll see you there later. Well, we're here, and it's not as cold and snowy as I thought it might be. So, we might as well start with the forecourt. Follow me. Whenever I do this, I feel like that scene in Titanic with Leonardo DiCaprio where he drops the keys. And I have done that plenty of times. In fact, it's not him that drops the keys, is it? It's the, uh, the guy that works on the ship. Well, we might as well start off then with this Audi A8. I bought this a couple of days ago from a YouTube viewer who's emigrating, and it's beautiful. It's so nice, I was genuinely, genuinely considering possibly keeping it for myself, maybe selling my white Range Rover. The thing I love about that is it's got everything on it you'd possibly need. It says everything without saying anything, if you know what I mean. It's, it's inconspicuous consumption. I really like it. If I were to keep it, I think I'd just leave the plate on it. I wouldn't even put my plate on it. Anyway. So that's that. It needs a valet. I haven't prepared this yet. It needs a couple of jobs doing to it. But it's a really nice example. I love the fact that it's got the beige leather interior as well rather than black. And it's a good spec. It's got heated seats, heated steering wheel, memory seats, all that sort of stuff. Just a really practical car, isn't it? You know what I've noticed about this as well? The door handles, this is really nerdy now, but they're almost on a micro switch rather than a, a lever. So you only have to sort of touch them a, a, tiny, a tiny amount and it's got soft clothes. It's making me out to be a liar now, isn't it? There we go, there we go right. Where should we go next? Oh, I'll tell you where we'll go next. Panda, Panda City. I bought this little Fiat Panda, again from a YouTube viewer. It belonged to his late father-in-law, who'd owned it from new, by the way, and it's only done 10,000 miles. It's a late 2013 63, so it's 10 years old now, but it's only done 10,000 miles. It's the little 0.9 litre twin air, which is only a two cylinder engine. So it makes that really characterful, interesting noise. It's a trekking model as well, so it's got all this sort of, you know, rubber clad stuff on it. So it looks like, not quite like a Panda four wheel drive, but it does look like it could go anywhere. Over here, we've got the most popular car in the UK, a grey Qashqai. Done 34,000 miles. I don't really rate them, to be honest, but whenever I drive one, I can see why people buy them. You get a decent sized boot, plenty of legroom in the back. Oh, this one's interesting, right. This is a Kia Soul EV, and I bought this again from a YouTube viewer, who, by the way, lived in the most beautiful house I've ever been to. It was such a beautiful place. Uh, it had its own lake and everything, it was gorgeous. Anyway, this was their nanny's car. So it's a full EV, full electric, and it's got a range, I think it's got a 27 kilowatt hour battery, so the range is about, well, in this time of year, it's probably 85, 90 miles. But on a good day, it's about 105, 110. And I bought this for one reason. I was talking to my mum one day and she said, oh, I don't really need my Lexus, it's a bit too big. I don't really need anything that expensive. Just get me something smaller if you, you know, next time you come across something. So this came in and I thought this would be ideal. So three of the tires were kind of on the limit. So I put four brand new Pirelli, what are they? Pirelli Cintorotos, whatever you call them. I had it serviced at Kia. The heated seat wasn't working. So it had a new heated seat. Um, what do you call it? I don't know, the, the swab thing. Anyway, that needed to be replaced. The previous owner could only find one key, not two. So I had another one cut at Kia and it's only done 16,000 miles. I bought some new genuine Kia mats for it. Just made it as nice as possible. Then I took it to my mum and she said, mm, I like the way it drives, but it's a bit of a granny mobile, isn't it? So fair enough. So I thought, right, I'll have to sell it then. And there we are. 
as I've mentioned many times, I'm not a huge EV fan, so I just don't think we're ready for them yet. But it is quite cool to drive because it's quite nippy, it's silent, it's clean. I do quite like that. And of course it's in city blue. Over here we've got a brown Vauxhall Mocha, which I always buy these because they always sell. This one's a, I think it's 1.6 petrol and it's done 80,000 miles. So this is my bread and butter really. This is just decent stock for me. I wouldn't have chosen a brown one to be honest, but I'm sure it'll sell. In some lights, it does look black really rather than brown. Over here, this is a nice car. This is a new shape, Volkswagen Touareg. So three litre turbo diesel, it's done 71,000 miles. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, silver with black and it's an R-line. It's a nice car. I might do a review with that because I haven't done a review with a new shape Touareg. This shape started in 2011, it was a 2011. This is a, a late 2015 65 reg car. Over here we've got Toyota Yaris, which again I bought from a YouTube viewer. I've been busy this month buying most cars that have been offered. You can't go wrong with a petrol Yaris. It's that little bulletproof 1.33 petrol engine and it's only done 25,000 miles. Full service history, 12 months MOT, the usual sorts of stuff. And I quite like the fact that that's got those great dark grey wheels in titanium, uh, titanium or something. Colour, not material by the way. I treated it to a set of genuine Toyota mats just to make it look a bit nicer. But no, that's a decent car. Over here we've got a 2017 66 Range Rover Evoque. 2 litre turbo diesel Ingenium and it's HSE spec and it's got the black pack so it looks quite cool. Everything's blacked out on it and I've had this for about a month now or six weeks and I'm surprised it hasn't sold because it should have done really. This in my mind is what everybody wants. Everything by the way is prepared on the forecourt, cleaned and then parked up but of course if you get a test drive or somebody comes and looks in it you do get some muddy marks on the floor. So don't think I haven't prepared these properly because I have. Uh, what happens usually is when we get a call on something we get it off, make sure it's got fuel in it, send it down to the car wash and then park it in that spot there so we're all ready and it's all clean. Yeah, it's only done 68,000 miles, full service history. And again, when I bought that, I, because I'm a bit sad, I did an engine service using genuine parts. I took it to Hallam Brothers, the local Land Rover specialist over in Hayfield. They did a service on the Haldex system, the four wheel drive system. So that was done. And I also serviced the gearbox. Kimas, Kimas, Kimas. Oh, the Renault Megane. Can I just read you something about that from the Top Gear magazine? This you'll have seen in my latest video. It's a 1.4 Extreme that I bought a year ago. Well, actually I bought, I came in part of exchange. So I paid 300 pounds for it, spent, I didn't think I'd spent that much on it, but when I was working out my costs, it's about a thousand pounds. So anyway, I spent a thousand pounds on it, but it looks quite presentable, doesn't it? It's the kind of stuff that always sells. People just wander in, we're in quite a good spot here. People just wander in and say, oh, have you got a little car? Mine, mine's been written off or stolen or won't pass an MOT or that sort of thing. Over there, it's where it gets a bit tight. We've got a Peugeot 208. Now these now have started to look really great value. Every time we get one of these, they sort of, I don't know, they've got a trade price usually. I'm not sure about this one, I can't quite remember, but the last few that I've bought, you can pick them up for three grand or something and sell them on for four, two fifty, four and a half grand, that sort of stuff. This one's a bit more expensive because it's a higher spec with a pan roof. Quite a good colour as well. They're generally quite good cars as well. I'm not a big fan of the tiny steering wheel, but yeah, no, they're all right. Over here, we've got a, another brown car, a Honda Jazz or a Honda Fit, if you're watching this in America. They're very good cars. It's a pity it's not auto. That's only done doesn't say. I think it's done about 25,000 miles. I actually picked that up from Chester myself and it drove really well. The clever thing with the Jazz, look at these seats, they just pop up and then how nifty is that? They're just really clever. For a small car they're about as practical as you can get. Over here we've got a five-door VW up exclamation mark. Now this might have been here last time I did one of these videos. This, 
I don't understand this job sometimes. This has done 18,000 miles and it's a really nice thing. Cheap to insure, cheap to tax, all that sort of stuff. And with it being a five door, it's quite practical. And yet, no interest at all. Nada. Over here we've got a new shape Igo. Now we actually run a very similar car to this as our courtesy car. So I've done many, many miles in this generation Igo. And they're really good cars. This one's a semi-auto. The trouble is, with a, with a late car like this, especially with a Toyota badge, when it's automatic, they look very expensive. This one's on it, I think 12 grand. It just, it sounds like an awful lot of money for a small car, but it's what they're worth. Over here, we've got a Mini Cooper convertible in a really nice color. It's very similar to Audi's Nano Grey or Nardo Grey. Everyone's doing this color these days. And I'm a big fan. And again, this one's been here since the summertime and I don't understand it. It's a nice car, sensible mileage, petrol, convertible, and yet no interest at all. It's weird. You know, people often think that you'd sell a four-wheel drive car as soon as it starts to snow, and you'd sell a convertible car as soon as the sun comes out. Well, yesterday it started to snow, and I sold a 125 BMW convertible. Makes no sense, does it? Over there in the corner, I actually quite like these. They're not the greatest quality, to be honest, but I do quite like them. It's a Fiat 500X. So they do the standard Fiat 500, the small one, then they do the 500X, which is a bit sort of Nissan Juke-ish in shape. And then they do the 500L, which is quite ugly. You'll have recognized that from, um, well, Peter Kay had one in car share, but this is the X. And I've had this for about three months. It's done 50,000 miles. It's a 1.4 petrol. It's a nice spec. It's a pop star. So middle of the road spec. And yeah, just no interest at all. I would, I would have thought that's the kind of car that every sort of youngish mum would want. I don't know. I quite like them anyway. Over here, this looks great value. I bought this a couple of weeks ago from a Kia main dealer. It's a Kia Seed, new shape on a 19, 2019, petrol. But it's quite high mileage. It's done 90, 90 something, which of course makes it a lower price. So... For £10,000, you could be in a 2019 car. Need to unlock this one. My colleagues in the office, by the way, unlocking everything as I go round, but that one's obviously auto-locked. This one's interesting, right. If you've been watching the Transformotion YouTube channel, you might recognise this. This was bought by the lads at Transformotion as a Cat S, so it had some damage to the back. Now, I don't normally sell category cars, by the way, but with the Transformotion stuff, everyone can see what's happened to it. So. If we get an inquiry on it, I'll just send them the link to the video and send them pictures of the damage before and, you know, be completely transparent about it. It actually didn't sustain that much damage. So it's had a whole new back because this, I think it had a bit of an impact here. So the lads, basically, I'm kind of making light work of what they did, but basically unbolted the back and put a new one on it and then painted it. So somebody would be getting a cheap car there because that's only done 30 something thousand miles. It's the 3.2, not the 2.2, so it's got the better engine, and it's 15 grand plus VAT, so quite a cheap truck, really, because it's a, it's a 2019 as well, and the reg is PAMP. <laughs> like Fiddy, yeah. Kia Sportage. This is something that I sell all day long. So 2012, it's done 74,000 miles, 1.6 petrol, two-wheel drive, and the really good news. It's an unusual spec, this, because it's got the glass pan roof, which this is a common issue. That had jammed, so I got it to my mechanics and got them to grease it all up, and now it's fine. But people don't do that, or they don't know about it, at least. And, you know, in this country, with this climate, we don't often use a sunroof. So it just gets clogged up with moss and green stuff, and then jams. So yeah, it's quite an unusual spec, in that it's got leather, but no heated seats. It's got a pan roof, but there's no sat nav or anything like that. But yeah, nice car. A guaranteed sell of that. Over here, we've got a Seat Ateca. Is it an Ateca, that? I get confused with new stuff like this. Because it's all very similar, isn't it? Seat Ateca. That's a nice car. I remember picking that up from the Valitas about two months ago, thinking this is a guarantee. This is money in the bank, this. 
that was two months ago. I'm sure it'll sell one of these days. It's what everybody seems to want these days, isn't it? It's done 43,000 miles. Yeah. Right, this is quite a nice car. I know it's boring. It's a Vauxhall Insignia. It's quite bland, isn't it? They're about as interesting as wallpaper paste. But this is a 1.5 litre petrol. It came in part exchange. The previous owner hadn't had it long, but he bought a caravan and realised that this wouldn't tow anything. Excuse me. So he bought a caravan and realised that this wouldn't tow it, so he bought a diesel four-wheel drive of us off memory. So, yeah, it's nice. He fitted a tow bar to it, which has never actually pulled anything. So, again, that's been in stock for about three months. This, this might be my oldest car, actually. This came in part exchange. We had a new shape VW Beetle automatic. This came in part exchange against that. It's done 66,000 miles. It's a one litre petrol. And I can't give it away. It's, it's strange. We've got a test drive on that later. That is a, uh, say a, a Hyundai Santa Fe. It's done quite a few miles this and I was kind of 50-50 about retailing it. But when I got it, it was really nice to drive, the history was very good, and I just thought it's done 140, 146,000 miles. But if you were to look at it and drive it, you'd never know. So hopefully that'll sell later. It's got heated seats, it's six-speed manual, diesel. Ah, this is a nice car. I bought this last week actually. So this is a Mini Countryman, and it's a four-wheel drive model, it's the old four. It's automatic, it's a two-litre diesel, it's the it's the Cooper SD, so it's quite quick actually, and it's a very good spec. So it's got sat-nav, heated seats, full leather interior, sunroof, it's done 71,000 miles, mainly main dealer service history, it was last done about a month ago. So I'm quite pleased with that, and it looks quite cool doesn't it? I'm not a huge mini fan as I've mentioned in lots of videos, but they do seem to be quite popular. I think it looks quite cool with the, uh, the white with the contrasting black wheels and all the black bits. This seems to have rooted itself to the forecourt, and I don't know why. It's a 2016 Audi A3 diesel, three-door, and it's only done 20,000 miles. It's quite low. 28,000 miles. And yet no interest in it at all. Weird. We've got the Smart 4.2. Now, this is quite a small parking spot here, so it's usually reserved for something like that, a smart car or an iGo or whatever. Anything else just sticks out too far. But this one's it's quite low mileage, this. I think it's done 28 or something. Can't quite remember off the top of my head. But it is a, it's the mild hybrid version. I think it's a passion because it's got the roof, or the glass roof that isn't glass, before you criticise me, leather steering wheel. It's got the... Um, the auto mode, so you can either drive it in manual or auto. And yes, yeah, low mileage. Oh, right, the middle row. We've missed a couple out here, haven't we? The Golf GTI. That's had a new gearbox. I did a video with this recently. I bought it for three and a half grand, and then at the end of the video, thought that I'd only paid 3,000 for it. So I thought my loss wasn't too bad, and it turns out it is quite bad. Then it needed a new mechatronic unit on the DSG uh, gearbox and it needed a new clutch and flywheel. And a new header tank, because that had a crack. So it owes me an awful lot of money, that. That was a mistake in hindsight. I've now got it on for 6995. It's a nice example, but it owes me, I think, seven and a half or something, seven, seven three, and it's on at seven, so. It's not great business, that really, is it? Over here we've got a 2016 Citroen C3. Only had one owner, I think, this. And these, they're a bit bland, aren't they? But they always sell well. It's done 42,000 miles. They're decent cars, really. Right, this is something that I walked straight past. And I know you'll have, you'll have seen the video with this, probably. I bought, a couple of weeks, uh, probably a couple of months ago now, actually, this IS300 Sport Cross. Now this, is a really rare car. The Sport Cross is rare, it's the estate version of the IS, but the 300 with that 2JZ engine is the light hen's teeth. And this is a really nice example. I drove down to Essex for this. It's done 80, 
6,000 miles, 88,000 miles. Not high, and the service history is unbelievable. There's a folder in the back there that's like an Argos catalogue, full of receipts. And it's a really nice car, and I was contemplating keeping it, but what for? I can't keep everything. So I imagine I might have that for some time because it's a bit of a niche market, isn't it? But I've had all the paintwork done. There was a bit of rust on the bonnet there and on the tailgate. I've had all that done. So it's now a really presentable thing. Kia Rio there. I didn't mention the Rio, I don't think. So that is a 1.4 litre turbo diesel, three door. They always sell well. They're quite good cars. In fact, you had one of these for a bit, didn't you? In this colour. Yeah, I did. Yeah. A five door though. I think yours is the 1.1 diesel. They did a really small diesel engine. Yeah, they, they did about 80 miles per gallon. No, they're good cars, so that should sell. Um, right, should yeah. we go inside? Oh, I'll tell you what, while we're outside, let me show you this. Uh, got two cars over here. On the right here, we've got a Seat Leon diesel. Now, this is the FR diesel, so it looks a little bit sporty than a standard Leon. They're good cars, these, genuinely. It's basically a Golf, and I bought this one. I've done a video with it that isn't finished yet, but will be very soon. It needed a little bit of prep, this car. It's done 107,000 miles, but really good service history. Michelin tyres. It's high spec as well, so it's got full leather interior, heated seats, glass roof, sat nav, all sorts of stuff. It needed a little bit of paint on the front bumper, because it had started to... Often with red cars, you start to get lack appeal and stuff, and I think this has had a previous repair, so I've had it painted, and I've had the whole car buffed. And if you have a look inside, I've not got the key on me, it's inside. It would do for Peter Crouch, wouldn't it, this? There's no seat in it. I've sent the seat away to my upholstery guy to, uh, to have it repaired. It was full leather and there's a slight rip on the, um, on the base of the driver's seat. And he texted me yesterday to say the upper part of the seat, the foam had deteriorated, so did, he, uh, did I want him to do that at the same time? So I said yes. So it should come back looking, looking really good. Then, what else do I need to do? Ordered a new string for the parcel shelf, uh, hatch, uh, parcel shelf, shelf. Um, I think that's all it needed. I've had the service done, it had new brakes, dis, uh, dis and pads front and rear. So it's had quite a bit of money spent, but it's worth it and I've got a decent profit margin in that. This one's quite a nice car. Now, coincidentally, they parked um, side by side and it's basically underneath the same car. So it's got the same engine, two litre turbo diesel. So yeah, it isn't a GTD this, it's a GT, what do they call it, a GT edition, I think. I thought, I got excited when I was offered it because I thought it was a GT, I can't remember what it's that, a GTD. And it isn't a GTD, it's a GT edition, TDI. But it's a nice spec. It's got this, um, I forgot what they call it now, this windscreen that sort of, I'll read up and I'll try and put the name on the screen. It's a good colour, it's a good spec. And that's had quite a bit of money spent on it. So again, it had a little seat repair um, because that had, had worn. It's had the wheels refurbished. It's had four new tires. Yeah, decent car. Over here are my two little cheap cars. So this little Picanto, this I bought about four years ago as a courtesy car and it's done, done us really well. It's never let us down. It's a cat, well, it was a cat D or something when I bought it. So it's had, a repair and you can see where it's uh, where it's had the repair because the paint's quite flat ironically the car the model is called a strike and i think that's exactly what has, <laughs> what's happened to it um so we used it as a courtesy car for about four years and i've just bought a newer picanto and i thought now's about time i uh upgraded the courtesy car fleet one by one really i lent it out to somebody last week this is what prompted this thought process really i lent it out to somebody who had a mocker that was in for a repair and she complained about that. So I thought, right, I'll try and upgrade it then to a slightly newer one. So I got a newer shaped Picanto and I thought I'd retire this and then put that on the fleet. So this is now for sale. Yeah, that's that. And this cash guy has got an issue. I've spent loads of money on this. Um, it's had a new turbo, um, new tires, wheel refurbs. I did a cam belt. It's quite a good spec as well. It's the plus two, so it's a seven seat. But it's got this weird issue that sometimes, it doesn't do it all the time, which is frustrating, but I can't really sell it with confidence. So it should be a five grand car, that, or four and a half, four, seven, fifty, something like that. I've got it on at 3,000 pounds because I can't fix it. So when you start it, sometimes it kind of hunts, so the revs will fluctuate. It doesn't do it all the time. Sometimes it settles right down and it drives fine. But when you're, when you're in neutral or when you're idling or whatever, 
the revs just sort of do that. I don't know what the reason is. If it was a petrol, I'd be thinking it was a, um, I don't know, some sort of cam sensor or something, but uh, I think they've tried that. Let's have a quick look in the showroom then, try and warm up. And we're inside then, right. So over here, we've got a 2018 Audi TT. It's a two litre petrol, S-line, quattro all wheel drive, automatic. And that's a really lovely car, that. It's done 30 odd thousand miles, full Audi history. It's just had a service at Audi, actually. Every time I drive something like that, I think I should just have something like that as my own car, just as a, just to run around in. It's really good on fuel and everything else. Then we've got a Range Rover Autobiography. This is a 2016 three litre turbo diesel. And it's been lavish with money. So it's got proper tires on it. It's unmarked. It's got deployable side steps and it's a good color combination. So it is Ferenz Red. Autobiography there. And it's got the contrasting ivory interior. It's a really nice car, this has done 52,000 miles. Just had it serviced and MOT'd last week. So it's good to go, that. And it's got the black pack on it as well. So it looks quite cool. Over here then we've got a Porsche 911. In white, the black interior and black wheels. Cool car, that, actually. Very cool. They're quite tightly packed in here because the other day I had the Audi A8 there, so I had to move everything back, which means can't quite get through the gap. This, you might remember, was my mother's old car. So it is a 2014, late 14, Lexus NX, and it's the premier spec, so it's got everything on it. Heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seats. It's got full Lexus service history. I sold it about eight months ago or something, 10 months ago maybe. And the owner then got in touch to say that he just bought a brand new Tesla. Did I want to buy it back? So I jumped at it because I knew the car and knew its history. And then it's just sat here for months and months and months, which is weird. Had the MOT done, took it to Lexus last week and um, got a service done. Yeah, weird. That you might remember from last this last video. It's a 2011 Jaguar XKR, just like my black one except mine to 2010. So this is a 2011, it's only done 54,000 miles. And I think, I think I've had it now about a year. And I don't understand. It says great price on Autotrader. It's had everything done to it. I think maybe the color's putting people off, but I don't know, I like it in silver. Looks really clean, I think. And it sounds wicked. So yeah, that's a bit of a mystery really. I don't know why that's still here. And last but not least then is this 2014, late 2014 Golf GTI. It's a manual. Still locked actually. It's only done 40 odd thousand miles. And again, really nice car. So, got plenty of stock really. Out the front though, we've got a Suzuki Splash Automatic. Full auto as well, not a uh, not semi-auto. And uh, one of those. So that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the quick tour. I've got to get a couple of cars off the forecourt now, namely that Santa Fe. So it's going to be a bit of a uh, bit of a shuffle. So yeah, thanks for watching. Nice I'll see you next time. And yeah, cheers, guys. Thank you. Yeah.